So we are still in the middle of the Learn How to Train Your Own AI series, but Sora just dropped and I have been blown away by the tech demo. It looks incredible and I'm really looking forward to see what I can do with it as it becomes available. But at the same time, I've also seen a lot of doom and gloom and some of it is from people that I really care about. I've got some friends who just graduated from college, either from a tech school, art school, video school, or computer engineering. And they keep telling me that the technology here is changing so fast that a lot of the young students feel like everything they just finished learning or practicing at school literally no longer applies in the real world world. You know, they feel lost, they feel like they wasted their time, or that none of their skills they have are relevant anymore, and they have no idea what to do, what to learn, or what to practice. And for those of you right now that are feeling this way, I thought it was important to make a few videos to help you find your direction and recollect your thoughts before we continue the channel as usual. This will probably only be about three or four videos, and these are videos that I was planning to release later, but I personally just felt like this is the kind of content that some people really need to hear right now, so... I don't really think it can wait. Now this is not going to be your typical motivational cheerleading video that a lot of other channels usually pump out there to make you feel better. And as usual, I'm not going to sugarcoat this situation. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, it's okay, don't worry about, there's an easy solution right here, all you got to do is X, Y, Z and sign up for my course, or whatever, because we all know those things don't really work. The truth is, your journey is just starting, and it's going to be challenging but it's not impossible. And I'll tell you why you have everything you need to make it out of this environment on top. The first thing you need to understand is your most valuable skill by far is not what you've memorized in school. It's not the software you've practiced. It's not the techniques or the things that you can do that other people can't. Those are all nice, but your actual most valuable asset is your ability and your willingness to learn what you don't know. The ability to adapt according to the needs of your environment. You need to understand that the software you master this year is going to be outdated in the next six months. There is never going to be a point where you have mastered the one true software that is better than all the others and now you can relax and use it for the rest of your life without ever needing to learn anything new. That is simply never going to happen. When I was in first grade, they were teaching us how to use the card catalog to figure out how to navigate a library. Then the next year, the catalog was upgraded to digital, and I literally never used that skill ever again. The next year, I was forced to learn how to write cursive, because I was told in middle school I was going to have to write everything down in cursive or the teachers would reject it. So after years of practicing cursive, I get to middle school, Microsoft Word comes out, and to this day I've never had to write a single essay by hand. Then in high school, I realized I wanted to be a game developer, so I started to learn on the only free software available, which was called Animator. And in that software, we literally had to create 3D models one point at a time. That is how we used to model. And I got really good at it. My first game on Steam is completely in low poly. If anyone needed a jet in less than 50 polygons, that was my specialty. Then later, Blender gets updates, and they start introducing non-destructive workflows and subdivision modifiers. And then I realize everything I practiced in high school is horribly slow and cannot keep up with the new kids who are extruding entire loops and edges simultaneously with arrays. Then I finally get comfortable, and then guess what? Nah, actually, polymodeling is for the old people. True professional 3D artists sculpt their characters with brushes and tablets. So I finally learned to sculpt with ZBrush, and then a few years later, now I'm hearing, oh yeah, sculpting is for old people. The new young bloods are going to be doing text to 3D next year, and it's going to be much faster than sculpting by hand could ever be. And then I realized, you know what? I'm not even surprised. I'm not even mad anymore. In fact, now I'm just excited because I know the drill. I've been here before. I have been to this rodeo many times. My whole life has been a cycle of change, and I realize that's just how it is. You see, a lot of artists like to fall in love with whatever their first technique was, and they get this idea that they're just gonna master it and never need to change. For me, it was low poly modeling. It might have not been efficient, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And I hated the idea of needing to learn a new way to 3D model because I thought it would be too easy, but I got over that. And more importantly, I improved. The more I forced and just pushed myself to just suck up my pride, suck up my frustration, and just give the next generation an honest chance. Just give the next thing a fair and unbiased stab just to see if it makes your workflow a little bit better or worse. If you try it out and it's not for you, cool, don't use it. 
But if you try it out and it makes everything faster, cheaper, and better, adopt it. It's probably going to rock your world or help your workflow and make you a more strong and resilient, adaptable person than you were before. But my point is, my value is not tied to my skills with any particular software. It's tied to my ability to learn whatever I need to do the relevant task. Change is coming whether you like it or not. And you can spend the next 24 hours worrying about it, complaining about it, praying to God that someone with more power and money and resources than you is going to stop it. Or you can spend those same 24 hours strategizing, optimizing, planning, researching, learning, figuring out new ways to use it for your advantage. Turn your fears into fuel. That thing you're afraid of in the future, master it. That's what we do here on this channel. If there's something we don't know, we break it down until we know. One tutorial at a time. That's what we've done for the last seven years, and I have no plans to start being afraid of the future now. At this point, I know that just about every problem I've ever had regarding work was just a matter of figuring out where to click. And there's a whole community of us here who are on this journey together with you. My community has a tradition. There's a special section in my Discord called Daily Progress. It's where we all post screenshot or text updates on whatever we learned or accomplished that day. No matter how small the accomplishment is, maybe you just learned what a texture map is. Maybe you made your first donut or programmed your first hello world. Whatever you did today that you didn't have yesterday is called growth, improvement, progress, checking off the list. That's taking another step towards being a better you. And that's how you make it through this cycle. The answer is forward. If you want to take control of your future, that's the direction you have to go. No matter how hard that is, don't be afraid of what you don't know. Don't be afraid of the future. And instead, look forward to shaping it together. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.